Let's just go live everywhere. We're live, 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 live. All right. I think I have successfully turned on the internet, at least turned on my stream. Uh, so welcome everyone. Glad to see so many of you coming in and we're going to be talking about designing on mobile today. So welcome uh, for those of you who have not seen me do anything like this or this topic before. Um, this is actually something I have done. Uh, something that I love doing because everyone carries a mobile device. And in most cases, the apps that I'm going to be talking about are free. So there's no reason not to do it. So, hey, Victoria. Hey, is it? Crouch from uh, Algeria. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me share this out one more time uh, so we can get a few more people in here. Let me share it out actually to my page. And then we can kick into gear and learn some new things about designing on mobile. All right. Okay, so without further ado, what do I mean by designing on mobile or using your mobile devices for design work? Uh, many of you carry, I'm assuming, probably a smartphone. Some of you are probably carrying tablets like the iPad. Tablet, the, the, the word tablet can mean a couple different things. It can mean a graphics tablet, like a Wacom. It can mean a tablet like a computer tablet, like an iPad or a Surface um, Pro or Surface Book. So when I, when I speak tablet in this sense of mobile design, I'm speaking of those computer type tablets like an iPad or an Android tablet in, in the sake of, or for the sake of um, what we're covering today. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna switch over to my computer and I'm gonna walk you through a couple of applications. Both applications are free, read my lips, free, <laughs> To download. I shouldn't say the read my lips part. But anyway, free to download. So the first one, let's switch over so we can take a look. First one we're going to talk about is Adobe Comp CC. So it's the third icon here on my iPad. The second one we're going to talk about is Adobe Capture CC. So those are the two applications that we're going to be covering today. Um, and, and again, both of those, you can go to your app store on iOS and download them, or you can go to your Google Play Store on Android and download Comp or Capture. They're both available, they're both free of charge. Now, even though they're free, um, they do of course tie into your Creative Cloud. So if you are a Creative Cloud member, then you can do more with them. But if you're not a Creative Cloud member, you can still use them for free on your mobile devices. You just won't get some of the syncing back to the desktop capabilities. Uh, that I'll get into in a minute. All right, so let's uh, let me pick up my iPad. I've got it in my hand right here, and we're going to go ahead and uh, fire up Comp CC. So I'm already logged in, so it took me right to my previous projects. If you weren't logged in, it would say, "Hey, do you want to log in with an Adobe ID or one of your social media accounts?" And you can log in. And the whole point of logging in is so that you can keep. Um, Number one, you can keep your projects synced between devices. And number two, if you are a Creative Cloud member, then logging in lets you do more. All right, so uh, welcome Jan, Peggy, Garden, and Colleen, and Victoria, and Chris, and Jackie. All right, so I think I saw or covered everyone I saw here. Let's uh, scroll through these. Space Super, and is that Yochalado? Yochel? Colado, and hello in Istanbul. All right, so with that said, what is Comp? Um, think of Comp as a page layout or design layout tool for your uh, mobile devices. So on the desktop, if I wanted to do page layout, I'd use Adobe InDesign, but we don't really have Adobe InDesign mobile. What we have instead is Adobe Comp CC. Now, if again, like I said, you can use it standalone, you can export out a PDF, you can export out a graphic and never have a paid Creative Cloud account. But if you do have a paid Creative Cloud account, then anything you design in Comp becomes editable on the desktop in your program of choice. So you could send it to the desktop and open it up in InDesign, Photoshop, or Illustrator. Your choice, whichever application you want to work in. 
So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and, and tap the purple plus sign at the bottom right and create a new design. As you can see, there's design layouts for devices, design layouts for print, web layouts, social media layouts, which is kind of cool for those of you who say, well, I kind of like Adobe Spark, but I would love to design something completely from scratch. Then uh, the social layouts would be best. And of course, my formats. These are formats that you have created. In other words, you didn't see quite the size you needed and you went and made your own size. So for example, I have a couple that I've done this before. I have a couple letter wides because if I go to my print designs, they're all there except there's one for letter, but not one for letter horizontal or letter wide. So I made my own 11 by eight and a half. And of course you can specify points or inches or millimeters or whatever you like. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and tap on my letter wide format and that will open up a blank page. And now you can design just like you would in InDesign. Um, now if you, and even now with the new Photoshop with the frame tool. So if you were to think, okay, how would I want to lay things out? Well, maybe I want an image at the top. Then I want a headline or a big piece of text on top of the image. Then I want a headline below the image. Then I want three smaller pictures below that. Then maybe I want some text below that. And then maybe I want another picture across the bottom. So you're already visualizing in your head what you might want those things to be. So with comp, you can go ahead and either just start placing images or things one by one, or you can put the placeholders for them and then fill them in later. Now, it's very gesture based. I'm using my Apple Pencil because I'm on an iPad, but you can absolutely use your finger if you don't have an iPad or don't have an iPad Pro or one that supports Apple Pencil. Um, and for example, it's, it's gesture based. I'm gonna show you how to learn those gestures in just a second. But if I wanted to put an image then down, I would just simply draw an X and that tells it, oh, you want an image placeholder. So as soon as I drew that X, it figured out that that was an image placeholder, then I can use my finger or the Apple Pencil to drag it to the size that I want, the size of the page. All right, next thing I want is I want uh, a big line of text, maybe under it or over it. So I draw a line and put a dot on the end of it. Then it says, oh, that's text, no problem. You can then pick that up, move that wherever you want it to be, make that as big as you want it to be. And you notice that there's a little control on the right hand side that goes up and down. You can make the point size as big as you want it to be. Um, so there we are. And of course it fills it in with sample text. You can go ahead and type in your text whenever you're ready uh, of what you really want it to say. So next up, I'm gonna draw another line. Put another dot on it because that's going to be my my subhead or my secondary line of text and we'll put that there and then i want some smaller pictures so and of course we already know the x that will give us a frame that we can drop or, or drop in uh will there ever be photoshop for the ipad pro yes there will we announced that it was coming at adobe max uh, so stay tuned for when that gets announced hopefully later this year all right, so if I wanted a circle um, with an image, then I would draw the circle and put the X in it. What software is this, please? This is Adobe Comp CC. So you can go get this for free from iOS App Store or from the Google Play Store. All right, so I'm gonna draw my circle and put my X in it, and then that way it knows, oh, you wanted a placeholder for an image that's in the shape of a circle. Now, the other thing I don't want to have to do is draw two more. And of course, if I draw two more by hand, they're not likely going to be exactly the same size. So you do have some menu options here like duplicate. So I can uh, duplicate one and then pull it over. Smart guides help me keep it aligned. So there it is in the center now. And of course, I can duplicate it again. And actually, you know what? I'm... I'm gonna undo that. I don't want a second one there. What I want instead is next to that, I want a, um, a paragraph of text. And so we already know how to draw text with one line and a dot. If I want multiple lines, then I could draw like three lines and a dot, and then it kind of knows to make that a multiple line one. If I want smaller text, just make the thing, drag the thing down smaller. So now I can put that and keep that aligned where I want that to be. And then last but not least, we want one more image along the bottom. 
So it gives us that placeholder and we'll go ahead and stretch that out. So again, for those of you who are just joining me, we're laying out our page doing graphic design work on an iPad Pro using Adobe Comp CC, which is a free application to download on iOS and Android. All right, so at this point, you can start placing items into these, um, into these frames or into this, this layout. So for example, I want to put an image there um, and I want something, since it's winter, I want something winter based. Now, if I already have my image on my iPad, in my Creative Cloud, in my libraries, I can just go ahead and grab it from wherever I have it. But if I don't have it from any one of those places, you can even go to Adobe Stock right here from Adobe Comp. So on my device means I already have my image, I already took my image, it's on my, on my device, go grab it. Take a picture right now, obviously take a picture right now. It's in my Creative Cloud Files folder, I can just go grab it from there. Or um, from the market or from, if I switch over to my libraries, I have access to all my libraries to get images from as well. So it, wherever your image is, most likely you'll be able to pull it into comp. But if you don't have an image, you can bring up Adobe Stock and search for it right he here on the spot. So if I say winter and do a search, it will find some nice winter scenes for me. Ooh, I kind of really like this one where she's throwing snow. And I can go ahead and license that asset or just simply save it as a preview if I don't want to pay for it right now. So we'll go ahead and license that asset to my, to my Adobe Live CC 2019 library. And that may not have licensed it. Let's see. I think it's going to come in with a watermark, but we'll see in a moment. Yep. Nope. It did license it. Okay. So that one came in and it's ready to go. And now I want to just double tap on the text. Remember, I put that text placeholder there. And I just want to put the word winter in all caps. And I want to, um, there we go, tap on that text one more time. And I want to center it. And I want the text color, tap on the color. I want the text color to be white. So there we are. We have our winter. And of course, I can now say if, th if this were any other application, I'd kind of be like, well, I have to use whatever fonts come with that application. But here in comp, I can go ahead and uh, select that and I can go into type and it will always default to Source Sans Pro as one of the Adobe fonts. But you have access to all of your currently synced Adobe fonts. And uh, let me, I just want to see here if there was one that I got from yesterday. Uh, yep, even the ones I got, I downloaded in my streams earlier this week are here. So there's that battery pack park that I got yesterday, that grungy looking font. If you were watching the stream yesterday, there's Adventure, the one I got from the day before. And I kind of like that battery park, so I'm going to go ahead and do that one. And I can go ahead and sync that down into uh, CompCC and boom, I've got my winter, my winter text grungy looking text. So there it is. Um, and I'm just trying to decide if that's where I want it. Let's say we put it up here for now. All right, and we'll go ahead and reduce the size down a bit. And of course this could all change. I could decide where I want things later. Now next up, I wanna go ahead and put in a couple of images into those frames. So I don't wanna, I already have some images. I don't wanna license anymore. So let's go ahead and look at my library from uh, from 20, my Adobe Live from 2018 streaming. I'm going to pull that image in and it's downloading that one from the cloud and hopefully putting that one in and there it is. And then the next one, we'll get one more. Uh, let's say that we'll use, oh, there's a picture of me actually in Iceland. That kind of works from a winter standpoint. And we can of course um, move the image over. There we are, and same thing here, move the image over a bit. And get it just the way I want. Okay, next up, uh, last but not least, the image at the bottom, we can go ahead and say that we want to grab another image and we'll use, we'll just for, not, for the sake of time, we'll just use the clouds or the sky image, I should say. All right, so we brought these images in. Uh, again, they can be from anywhere you want. 
Uh, can you make a stream on how to edit wildlife pictures? Uh, I'm not a wildlife photographer, so I'm not, that wouldn't be my forte, but I could um, possibly do that. Uh, but I would I recommend go checking out Moose Peterson. He's a fantastic wildlife photographer and he knows his stuff. So check out Moose's work. Moose Peterson for wildlife photography. All right, so now I've got my kind of layout done, concept done so far. The only thing I don't have is my text for the paragraph, for the head, subhead and the paragraph. But let's say that I also want to have some different colors um, other than the, the colors that are built in or the colors that are existing in my library. So what I want to do now is I want to switch to a different app. We're going to not finish this yet. Just going to switch over to a different app called Adobe Capture CC. So when I bring up Capture, it's going crazy because I got my camera blocked. I'm going to just turn the camera and release it so I can see it. And there's a picture, or not a picture, but there's an actual physical um, uh, statue of a camel. And it's the Adobe camel, so it's kind of one of those things. And I want to just go ahead and lock in on some of the colors in this scene. So I can, oh, let's go back. I wasn't quite ready yet. So I can go ahead and freeze, tap to freeze, and then I can go ahead and get the colors that I want. So I want that color. I want that color. I want, let's see here, we'll get some of that color from Illustrator and we'll get, so I'm literally dragging these color pickers around until I get the colors in that image that I want to use. And let's how, get a little Premier Purple there. And then once I'm done, I can go ahead and just simply say that I want to capture these colors and save them into a library. And you can edit the colors as well. So for example, for that purple, if I want it to be a little bit more purpley, I can go ahead and adjust it right here. For this one, if I wanted it to be a little bit more red, I can adjust that one right here. So I can get my colors, materials, shapes, um, text from my environment around me. <laughs> yes, it's a moose, not an elk. Um, from the uh, environment around me using Adobe Capture CC, another free application that you can download on iOS or Android. All right, so once I choose Save, um, Creative Cloud Sync enabled. Your assets will be synced automatically. I didn't see which library I was saving this into, but hopefully it's in the right one. Yep, it's in my 2019 library. So I saved that color theme to my 2019 library. So now I can switch back over to Adobe Comp CC. And if I go to color and I switch libraries here, change library to Adobe 19, there are the colors in Adobe Comp. Because once those colors were synced to my Creative Cloud, they instantly became available to me, not only on my mobile devices that I'm working on or mobile apps that I'm working on right now, but even on my desktop as well. So if I go to Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere, After Effects, you get it. Those colors are available to me as well. Why would I use Comp on my desktop when I can just use InDesign? You wouldn't use it on your desktop. Comp is not a desktop app. It's a mobile app. So you're out and about with your mobile device using Comp to kind of build things. Maybe you're sitting with your client at a bar, restaurant, and you're sketching things out, and then you're going to finish it in InDesign. So Comp's not for your desktop. You would use InDesign. All right. So for example, if I like that purple, which I'm a purple kind of guy, I got a purple shirt on, it looks blue to you, but kind of purpley today, and away we go. I got that color. Now... To answer Colleen's question, I am finished, you know, sketching this out with my client. They're going to give me the final text for this later, maybe change out some of the images, but I want to finish this on the desktop. So now if I go to send, that's where the desktop comes in. If you are a Creative Cloud member, if you're not a Creative Cloud member, you can just share this as a PDF and work with this app just for free on your devices. If you are a Creative Cloud member, you can say send to InDesign, send to Photoshop, send to Illustrator, whichever one you prefer. And it will it's building right now. I see the little circle going on. It's building an InDesign document and syncing that InDesign document, compatible document, um, to my desktop. And once it's done, it should open it up in InDesign on my desktop, fully editable, fully ready to go. 
So if you were uh, saving this out, for example, as a Photoshop file, you would have your layers. If you're saving out as an Illustrator file, you'd have all your editable Illustrator um, attributes. So we'll give it a few more seconds to do that process. Internet speed was standing. And of course, depending on how many elements you told it to use, it has to sync all that stuff up as well. Spinning, spinning, spinning. And then it will come up, should pop up with a thing saying sent. And then we should see some action happening on the desktop in just a moment here. So we'll give it another minute. And while we're waiting, I can address questions. Uh, Karak, Karak uh, saying that this is very interesting, if I pronounce your name correctly, hopefully. And let's see. Da, 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 da. We always created a palette and then design primary, secondary, and tri or <laughs> tertiary frameworks first. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get it. Cool. And there it is. Okay, so it's sent. And now it's going to take a second or two for it to sync on the desktop. But it's been sent up to the cloud. And then once it's done, thanks. Is this on Android? Yes, it is. You just join, what's off? Okay, we already covered that. And we'll give it a second or two and hopefully it'll open up on InDesign on the desktop. So let's see. And there it is. So <laughs> as soon as I said that, it popped open InDesign. And here it is in InDesign, completely ready to go, complete with the purple color. Uh, and if I were to go, by the way, to my CC library and look at that library, which is the 2019 library, I will have that same color theme and those same images that I told it to get, uh, that one image I told it to get from um, Adobe Stock is there as well. So everything's there, everything's synced, everything's editable. So for example, I can move this around, work on the word winter, change it to, uh, for example, winter is coming and it's all there, fully editable, fully ready to go. And Colleen, I just answered your question literally right in front of you. <laughs> Can it sync? It just did. All right. So um, that's comp. Capture CC was the one that let me get the colors. I'm going to do one more capture demo uh, because I think it's kind of cool that it does this. And then we'll call it a day. So let's switch back over to the iPad just for a second. All right. We're back on the iPad. And now, and again, this doesn't have to be an iPad. It could be an Android device. It could be your phone. Uh, I just want the iPad for the bigger screen. All right, so I'm gonna close. Actually, no, I'm not gonna close it yet. I'm gonna move this around. I move this over and I'm gonna draw one more frame here. All right, we'll put that frame right there. Okay, cool. So now I got that frame in place, ready to put something in it. And next we'll switch back over to capture. And in Capture, I'm in the right library. I'm going to bring up the camera again. I'm going to point it right back at that same camel. But instead of capturing colors, I'm going to switch it to capture shapes. And as you can see, everything immediately went to monochrome, black and white. I'm going to zoom in on it because I can. And I'm going to pull down the contrast a bit because I can. I don't want to lose too much of the camel, but I want to get rid of some of that table. And then I'm just going to go ahead and snap it, capture it. All right, so that captured it, and that just captured a black and white, you know, cruddy looking photo of the camel. But we can do more. So first and foremost, I'm on, going to tap on the eraser tool. I'm just going to kind of erase some of this stuff, probably easier to do with a pencil. And I just erase some of this stuff around the camel's legs, like get rid of some of that stuff in between, some of that table. There we go. Get rid of all of that. Get rid of that. Oh, I could probably cut in that too much, but for the sake of time, we'll let it go. Get rid of all of that. And notice I'm not really trying to get rid of like everything around it because there's another operation I'm going to do that's going to help me with that. So I'm just going to get rid of all of this. And I'm also going to get rid of the, the parts that were the reflection on the table. So just getting rid of the extra feet that were reflecting down. 
Okay. And then I'm just going to get rid of some of this. Now, the reason I'm not really getting rid of all of it, all the excess table stuff and background is because there's a crop feature. And so as long as I got rid of the stuff around it, I can go ahead and tap crop and then crop in to get rid of the rest. So I'll just use crop to eliminate the other parts that I don't want. There we go. And we don't need any extra top. And we don't need any extra bottom. And now I could um, tap on, this is the part that's magic, is tap on smooth. Now, smoothing is currently off. It already vectorized it, but it didn't vectorize it using the smooth feature. So smoothing is optional. But if I tap on smooth, that will give it a little extra attention to vectorize each component of this and turn this photo into a trace. Adobe Comp only makes static images or JPEGs. No, it makes PDFs and it makes static images and it makes documents for Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. But it's not an animation tool or motion or video. So yes, from that standpoint, it is static. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit save now and it should save that to the library. And it did, so I can get out of the capture part and now that's in the library. And I can, by the way, from Capture, I could send that over to Illustrator and, and work on it some more in Vector. But while it's here now as a cap, as a, um, oh, actually I do need the iPad. While it's here as a, uh, a vector shape in my library, I can go back to Comp and I can now say, go get something from that library. Let's change libraries to the 2019 library. And let's see if it's synced. Looks like it hasn't synced yet. But once that syncs over, I should be able to pull that in as well into comp. Now, let's see, it might just be taking a minute to sync there. So if not, there it is. So it's 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 here on the desktop, it hasn't synced on the, on the iPad yet, but even on the desktop now, I can do the same thing. So I can literally finish the work here. So we can go ahead and say, move that over and bring in the camel and scale that to fit that spot right there. And there it is. So capturing things, turning them into materials, colors, shapes, type. I think that's everything I'm missing. Oh, patterns. Uh, all from your mobile devices using Adobe Comp CC. All right, so with that said, the only other thing I'd probably do is move this stuff around. Let's see, we'd probably take that, move that over, move that over. There we go. We don't want the camel like looking into, looking away from everything else. So we'll kind of put that in the middle. And there we are. So a design started on mobile, finished on the desktop using Comp CC and of course Capture CC where it was important to get the colors patterns, materials, shapes, and text. Now, cool stuff you can do for free using just two of the free mobile applications. Adobe has more, but those are two that you can get started with today. Comp for your layouts, capture for capturing elements that you wanna put in your layouts, Adobe Photoshop sketch for painting and drawing, Adobe Illustrator Draw for vector drawing. These are all free apps. I could go on, but you get the idea. Check out your respective app stores for iOS or Android. Go download the mobile apps that you're missing. Start playing with them and not always be tied to your desktop or your laptop when it comes to mobile or when it comes to design on the go. So with that said, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one. Colleen, I'm glad you're liking this more and more. All right, with that said, uh, wait, is there one more? Okay, that's an off topic kind of thing. All right. Um, again, another off topic thing. All right, so I think I got all the questions I can answer for this. And cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.